coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Amazon gets an experimental airworthiness certificate for its UAS. 10,000 aircraft have ADS-B installed, but there's a long way to go. And Bombardier adds another aircraft to the C-Series flight testing fleet. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. The FAA has issued an experimental airworthiness certificate for an Amazon Logistics unmanned aircraft design that the company will use for research and development and crew training. Much like any experimental airworthiness certificate, it comes with some restrictions. All flight operations must be conducted at 400 feet or below during daylight hours in visual meteorological conditions. The UAS must always remain within visual line of sight of the pilot and observer. And the pilot actually flying the aircraft must have at least a private pilot certificate and current medical certification. The certificate also requires Amazon to provide monthly data to the FAA that includes the number of flights conducted, pilot duty time per flight, unusual hardware or software malfunctions, any deviations from air traffic controllers instructions, and any unintended loss of communication links. The march towards the overhaul of the National Airspace Navigation System continues, as the General Aviation Manufacturers Association relayed an announcement that ADS-B equipment is now on board 10,000 aircraft. The FAA said at the Equip 2020 Working Group meeting last week, that this important milestone was reached in late February. The EQUIP 2020 Working Group was established by FAA Deputy Administrator Michael Whitaker in October 2014 to encourage the adoption of ADSB equipage and address challenges to equipage. The FAA has estimated that 100,000 to 160,000 general aviation aircraft will need to be equipped with ADSB out before the FAA's January 1, 2020 mandate. Gamma President and CEO Pete Bunce said in part, quote, with over a dozen products on the market and more on the way, the cost of equipment has dropped and operators have a choice of cost-effective solutions that meet the FAA's mandate. After the break, Bombardier's C-Series test plane number five is on the line. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Bombardier C-Series aircraft testing program continues to move ahead. Bombardier says that the fifth CS-100 flight test vehicle of the C-Series aircraft, equipped with the first finished cabin interior, took to the skies last week. This test aircraft will be used to test all the passenger experience-related systems, such as ventilation, lighting, ordnance systems, seats, galleys, and laboratories. This flight comes on the heels of the CS-300 aircraft's first flight on February 27th. The first CS-300 aircraft completed its inaugural flight, and together with the other C-Series flight test aircraft, there are now six aircraft in the certification program. The C-Series aircraft program has accumulated well over 1,200 combined CS-100 and CS-300 flight hours. 
Each week, we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off. So you're seeing me kind of uh, circle around the, the mountain peak and uh, you know tipping my wings so that way they can get some good shots. Glider flying can combine serenity yeah, with excitement. In this shots. video, we see this in action along with a this detailed one, narrative. I've, Search glider looping near mountain on YouTube. And then I love to do loops. After these messages, Rockwell Collins to provide oceanic data link service. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has awarded a seven-year contract to Rockwell Collins to provide the company's Oceanic Data Link service. This enables real-time data communications between pilots and air traffic controllers, allowing aircraft to fly more efficient routes with enhanced safety. A UAV came close to two news-gathering helicopters covering a fire in the Seattle area. The UAV was at more than 1,500 feet above the ground. The copter's TV cameras captured the whole thing, including the operator of the UAV. Emory Riddle's College of Engineering at the Daytona Beach campus has received a $10,000 award from the National Center for Women and in Information Technology. Sponsored by Microsoft, the donation sponsors the recruiting and retraining of women in computing fields of endeavor. This week marked the 50th anniversary of man's first walk in space. Russian cosmonaut Alexei Leonov exited from Russian spacecraft Voskhod 2 and stayed out for a total of 23 minutes, 41 seconds. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. Last January, a small UAV crashed on the White House lawn. And now we know how the system works. If you're a federal employee who has a few too many drinks and borrows a friend's UAV and crashes it on the White House lawn at 2 o'clock in the morning, you dodge the bullet of having federal charges filed. In a statement released last week, the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia said that the decision, quote, was made following an investigation by the United States Secret Service and a review of applicable law. The Federal Aviation Administration has begun a review of the incident for possible administrative action, end quote. The perpetrator's attorney said in a statement, quote, this entire incident, while unfortunate and understandably alarming, was totally inadvertent and completely unintentional, end quote. It'll be interesting to see how the FAA follows up on this incident. Well, that's our program for Monday, March 23rd. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.